And for a couple of uh, last years, we were um, aiming to design and develop uh, a prototype for an, um, return on investment analytics the dashboard to be used in multinational and coalition exercises. Uh, if you would like to uh, know more about the Matlex project, I would encourage you to go to um, visit our website, which is matlex.org. Uh, and I would focus only uh, today on, uh, the, on this uh, dashboard. We, um, when we started actually working on the dashboard, it was really hard because a um, lot, whole lot of people didn't know what we are talking about. So uh, what we did, we organized two waves of informal and formal surveys during uh, 2019 and uh, 2020 uh, to figure out what we are actually supposed to develop and how that would help them. So we did collect uh, um, some, uh, collected a lot of da data, uh, what people think about what we supposed to do. And uh, those that data is supposed to give us a current understanding of the community, um, um, their experience with and, and risks with the, uh, which will, um, which might bring. The, uh, but also the opportunities related to learning analytics uh, and uh, particularly as tied to military exercises. Um, we um, seeked for uh, their recommendations also about the types of the analysis they would like to, um, uh, to see and uh, uh, specifically about uh, data visualizations they would be interested in. So all of that was quite confusing for a whole lot of stakeholders. And basically, we, uh, on the end of that process, we did um, realize that there are uh, several major points and key requirements which they um, would expect from learning analytics. And um, that is listed here, like useful, versatile, interoperable, editable, free, real-time, almost basically impossible to put together. Medical uh, but, but, but we did um, translate that into something what we can do within the scope of our project and within the scope of what we're supposed to do. So we uh, basically put together the requirements for this um, Madlex ROI dashboard prototype that we translated that usefulness uh, supposed to be tied pretty much to the multinational exercises and supposed to di uh, directly address the stakeholders' lack of understanding about what learning analy analytics is and how useful that can be. So basically um, representing some uh, uh, data which comes directly from uh, the examples of the exercises which we dealt with during the, the course of the Madlex project. Uh, the versatility, uh, we understood that it's supposed to give multiple user profiles with a different level of access, satisfying the needs of the train, trainers, but also trainees, as well as the managers and flag officers and so on. The interoperability, um, for us, uh, the collection and retrieval of XAPI data and non-XAPI data from a wide, wide by our variety of uh, systems um, is, was extremely important because um, each of these exercises would collect different uh, data on a different way. Um, editable, we didn't even think that we can put together something as a template what everyone will be satisfied with. So we assumed that basically everyone would like, like to make their own version of the uh, of the dashboard. Uh, free um, is like open source and uh, so they can build on their own um, because we didn't have an instance of uh, one exercise organizers with, which uh, would uh, um, 
uh, deal with the same technologies with the other uh, um, exercise organizer. And uh, finally, it's supposed to be um, instantaneous, so um, live connection to a learning record store um, uh, would give that instant uh, uh, and real uh, time uh, uh, overview of uh, um, data. So trying to put this together was not easy task, but we put together uh, a first uh, uh, a prototype and you can find it on this link, which is easy to remember, demomadlex.org. And if you want, you can go directly now and on that link so I can walk you through what you're actually seeing um, on the link. When you uh, come to the website, you will see this uh, first kind of overview of, of uh, imaginary uh, exercise. The data put together behind this website is actually um, the, coming from a real exercise, but uh, they are not real people. Um, uh, we obfuscated, uh, obviously, the, the, the names of the, of the people and the names of the objectives and so on. But when you, um, when you click on the demo, each from your, web, uh, from your computer or desktop, uh, the, um, uh, you will, uh, each user on this demo will get its own ID. Um, uh, so uh, uh, this is kind of important uh, uh, because uh, you can you can uh, edit this um, uh, prototype, but you will not mess up with uh, with the actual website. So don't worry about that. You can delete and uh, and uh, 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 move around the um, visualizations. This um, product, uh, this first page which you see over here has several data visualizations, but really. Uh, one which is the most uh, important one, it's correlation um, uh, matrix, which you can see as a first here, and which is supposed to be the correlation uh, uh, among all of the objectives uh, in one exercise. And this is the, the, uh, the one which comes uh, uh, immediately after you put together several of your um, uh, data sources. The, um, other than that, there are separate tabs for each of the other data sources. There are two which are uh, in, um, pretty similar in between um, each other. Uh, there are LMS source and uh, um, mobile learning source as examples of uh, very um, uh, good sources for an exercise like this, because um, they could be fully uh, XAPI driven and uh, you can uh, get many, many visual representations of what's going on uh, in those sources. And we, uh, over there is more like 15 examples of that visualization, so um, that might be um, um, uh, within uh, one source, but of course you can uh, you can delete and play around or edit any of those. Um, and then there is one more source which is a little bit different, and that one is a different um, uh, for a reason uh, because uh, uh, we have observer da data which are very often part of the exercise. And uh, those are coming in many, many different ways. Um, the, uh, the most uh, um, most usual way uh, how they come, they are tied to um, training objectives. And here we presented several uh, visualizations which might be or might not be uh, your case, uh, but of course, in addition to this, you can make much, um, many more uh, um, similar uh, like uh, on the previous uh, data sources uh, utilizes a, by utilizing any of the visualization templates. This is just an example from a real exercise where um, their um, uh, objectives are, are um, uh, shown in a timeline or 
um, uh, achievement per, um, per objective and so on. Um, and what you can do on this uh, um, uh, dashboard, as I mentioned before, you can add it. Uh, if you click on each of these visualizations, you can add it, rename and relocate the visualization. That means you can move it uh, wherever you want, or you can simply delete it. And uh, um, uh, you can create your own. If you click on, on the tab on, uh, on the left side, uh, which says visualize, you can you can actually uh, make your own. You can choose um, from which of the data sources you want to make your own, and then you can you can play with that and make uh, uh, put together different uh, data um, um, from that source and uh, and just basically save it and add it to the um, dashboard. That will be added to your um, uh, your your uh, uh, dashboard. The what else you can do? You can um, also explore the learners. If you click on a left, uh, left tab and if you see um, uh, you go into any of these learners, you can see that there are um, uh, there are very granular insights into their learning behavior. Uh, and this is the same uh, um, thing here. This, this uh, um, uh, several visualizations which we have there came from the experience uh, in the exercises that uh, mostly people would like to see the the, the logs, uh, the the ways how uh, when they came to um, uh, uh, learn something where where they started. Uh, um, how they are doing in comparison to the others and uh, and so on average uh, how their scores doing um, and uh, how active they are um, so um, as and the last thing uh, you shouldn't forget to share your prototype dashboard so this is um, come into place that um, specific ID which you got in the beginning when you uh, enter the website um, and the, um, on the right upper corner you will see share that uh, this dashboard that means that basically you can send someone else the link the uh, um, your specific link and then the uh, it will um, they will see uh, the prototype of the um, uh, of the dashboard which you made it Otherwise, if you send them only the uh, demo madlex.org, uh, they will have to start start all over. One mo uh, more important thing in connection to this, in the right uh, uh, lower corner, you will see this feedback. And um, because we all understand that the, this is not the end, but probably beginning, we would really, really appreciate your feedback for anything on the on the website to help us develop, develop it further. Another thing is that the dashboard is uh, um, the prototype is open source and could be found on the uh, on the GitHub. So you can uh, go to this link. And uh, Liz will put the link in the uh, chat let, later on, uh, where we uploaded the um, the prototype, so you can um, download it yourself and you can play uh, on your computer. Uh, you can also use that download to make your own dashboard, not to use the prototype at all. You so, saw. Uh, you can connect to your own letter, LRS and your own envi environment and um, make your own. Um, you can also join us at the Madlex working group uh, and um, the GitHub community to influence the further development. Uh, and um, I, as I said, you can just send us the feedback and uh, tell us where we are wrong, if we are wrong, and how we can go further from this. I hope that all of you had the possibility to click on these links, uh, and uh, I am actually really exciting, uh, excited to hear your comments uh, and your questions. 
If you have any questions, you can type them in the chat or you can unmute and ask that way. Thank you, Yolanda. Yolanda said that this was a very interesting presentation. Thank you so much. I'm really eager to hear your thoughts, your comments, and, um, and issues, of course. I have a question, Biliana. May I? Yes, of course. Yeah, Maxim. Uh, uh, the procedure of putting the data from from the LRS to the dashboard, it's a manually or it's in somehow it's optimized, optimized or something like that. So because a lot of statements in the LRS and how to uh, put everything to the uh, dashboard precise data. Then. So how is it going? No, it's automatized, Au automatic, <laughs> of course. Uh, it's uh, it, you shouldn't be putting <laughs> manually, but um, this is the prototype, and it's already the data which you see over over here. They're already there. Uh, if you download the, the the prototype and make it your own, you connect uh, your LRS, and then the data is uh, the real time data coming from your LRS. So um, you don't need to do it manually. The uh, the thing is with the data which are not uh, XAPI, um, those are much bigger problem, of course, to be presented uh, in the same environment like XAPI da data. And that is really very different from the exercise uh, organizer, depending how they're putting together data and uh, what they're uh, uh, how did they're delivering. So if they're delivering manually, then you have to um, transfer it into XAPI data and then um, uh, add it to um, all the other data. Okay, thank you. Um, looks like there's, unless I, I missed you answered this one already, um, but there is there a specific data format for your source data? Yes, XAPI. <laughs> Oh, whoops. <laughs> Thank you. Of yes, uh, yes, we would. Uh, I, I maybe I missed that, or maybe I didn't actually talk about that very much. But Madlix project is a much bigger project than um, the make uh, the, the this prototype uh, and work on this prototype. So basically, um, main uh, goal of um, Madlix project is to mature ADL into the exercises. And that involves a whole lot of uh, other um, uh, things around it, including the um, implementation of, uh, of standards, of the learning standards. And uh, uh, of course, uh, naturally, uh, XAPI and implement implementation of XAPI um, as a da data standards is one uh, of them. Um, so uh, to utilize this dashboard and to uh, not only that, but also to uh, have uh, um, advantage of uh, data um, uh, in learning, you should use uh, standard uh, standardized learn um, uh, data. Otherwise, it will be much more difficult. So that said, if you would like to use a prototype like this and not using XAPI data, it will be very hard. All right. Looks like the next question is: Can you can the system be integrated into LMS tools like Canvas? Yep. Um, I am uh, not that familiar with the Canvas, but as, as far as I know, Canvas is um, not non XAPI uh, LMS. Uh, the goal here would be to um, integrate the LMSs and uh, which are XAPI, because uh, if, for example, um, an uh, exercise organizer cannot use XAPI data in some simulation or in some observer data or something like that, LMSs really don't have very much excuses because using um, uh, um, standardized data for uh, LMS, I think uh, that it should be um, must pretty much, but um, the goal here is to integrate any type of data. 
uh, and definitely uh, uh, LMS data um, would be uh, easiest part. Um, are there other options to choose different languages to display since it's multinational? Um, not for the moment, but it's a very good idea and thank you for that. I think it would be very easy for us to uh, work on that with all of our international friends so with uh, uh, whom and thank to whom we actually um, uh, worked on this prototype because they um, helped us a lot with the permiss uh, permissive environment of the exercises which they organized. Um, so they, we can use them as a experimentation beds for our research and for development of this prototype. And at very least, what we could do, we can uh, go back to them and uh, uh, make available this prototype in their language. So thank you for that. Um, someone posted here um, adopters. Um, the um, link to XAPI adopters, cross-browser support. Um, no, I, it shouldn't be. This is really not the very big or, or um, doesn't require any additional uh, elements uh, more than usual. Um, so there, uh, I, I think that there is, uh, Sometimes if you if you have a very small um, screen like I do um, currently, um, it might be a little squished because uh, some of the visualizations naturally they look uh, much nicer when they are on a bigger screen. But other than that, browsers should be okay. Yep. And for anyone who's just listening who didn't see the chat, that question was if there was cross browser support. Did you get any other frequently asked questions after using this in your exercises? Yeah, I mean, I just wanted to tell that. Uh, basically, uh, one of, um, of the questions from many people um, we encountered uh, during uh, the development and during uh, uh, Madlex project and uh, the surveys which we ran was what is this? How this can be used? And how, what do you mean with the uh, data visualizations? So at the very least, what we wanted to achieve with this is to show and to have one starting point for the further development um, so that people can connect with what we want to achieve in the future and where we are right now. And it, this is definitely uh, and probably far away from uh, many expectations, but uh, um, it's a good starting point for people to, to realize where we are going. It's sort of, uh, uh, it's sort of like uh, people are saying that uh, women, or at least me, go to shopping to figure out what they want to buy. Um, so uh, this uh, um, uh, dashboard is for uh, exercise organizers to figure out, uh, figure out what actually they want uh, to see uh, in, in, um, uh, in an exercise dashboard. Do you plan on supporting any other formats beyond XAPI, for example, SCORM or AICC? Um, well, we, as I said before, we, uh, our, our job is actually to promote uh, and to implement uh, the standards which are developed by the IADL initiatives and which are um, um, valuable uh, for learning uh, community. Um, and we believe that um, the newest standards uh, like XAPI or CMI5 or so on um, uh, is our, our, our priority. But um, nevertheless, a lot of our um, partners and stakeholder organizers, they deal with all kinds of data and we have to deal with that as well. So in this 
prototype which I showed you, there uh, there is um, data coming from uh, um, um, uh, observer trainers, which are actually an um, data file which they gave us uh, in a form or CSV file. Um, we don't plan to deal separately with uh, any other types of data necessarily, but we would um, uh, bridge translation in between any other type of data and uh, the XFEI data. I don't know if I answered to you the question. Um, no, we don't have to plan for for specific uh, types of data, but we are bridging all kinds of types of data, XFPI and non-XFPI. It is harder, of course, as I said, it's easy to deal with XFPI, but um, but the reality is that whole lot of Mm, organizations are not using XAPI yet, uh, and uh, um, those who are using it, they can feel the benefit of that. I'm imagining everyone in here is just playing in the dashboard right now, <laughs> thinking up their questions. We really appreciate your questions, so please don't feel uh, embarrassed to ask anything what you would like to know. And then if they want, if they come up with questions later, I already put the link to your website in the chat. Um, I, there's a contact us button on the top, right? I believe that just goes straight to your email. Be personal. OK. Yes. Um, all right. And, and also there is a feedback, as I said, down there on the uh, uh, on the website, uh, uh, on the demo. You can send us a feedback as well. Um, and. Um, um, that and if they get if they get really into it, they can join the working group, right? And the link is on the yes, homepage. absolutely. We are not stopping in the development, uh, and we are not stopping with uh, further um, uh, uh, strategies and options for de further development. So we really would appreciate your um, uh, input in that. Um, please join us um, in. Um, our working group. Um, you can find it on the website madlix.org. Madlix is the website. Um, uh, Liz just posted for um, the website link, but it's also you can post, uh, you can uh, send again demo, demo. Um, yes, and GitHub, yes. There is a question, if we are focused on the development technology of the things, or do you accept members who are in user experience, usability, usability side of things? Both. Both. Please, yes. Uh, please help us uh, um, uh, either or. <laughs> uh, we um, usually discuss about the um, uh, technology, but um, most people are talking, um, uh, are interested in usability because after all, why we are developing something if nobody wants to use it? We want to be usable. So yes, please join us and let us know what you think about usability. Thank you so much. Yes, I can see that there are more people interested in, in this. You. I would be interested if uh, anyone can tell me more about different kinds of data which they are uh, thinking about integrating within uh, an exercise and environment. Hey, Milena. Yes. Yeah, and uh, Maxim Tishin, to you uh, Based on our experience, it's. Uh, <clears throat> From LMS, from the pre-training uh, phase, yes, uh, a lot of statements can be collected. And uh, uh, during the exercises, we collected um, what is not uh, available currently uh, from from the observers. Yeah, so to to put manually. Yeah, but uh, also uh, we are thinking about uh, 
somehow integrate uh, from uh, simulation systems the statements uh, from JKS and probably uh, we will try uh, from GTLAS uh, during the next uh, Viking exercises. We'll see. And so <laughs> a lot of data can be collected, but the, the problem is how how to how to connect all those systems in in once and and collect those data and and analyze. So. Uh, but uh, it would be interesting to collect everything. No, not everything. I mean, from different sources uh, together with the uh, manual observations and then compare it uh, as a final result. And this is, uh, it would be really interesting and useful. Thank you. Thank you for that. And I can see that we have um, comments uh, in the comments, also uh, some very interesting uh, observations about data. Um, I uh, uh, I have to just uh, um, reply to this, what Maxim was suggesting, uh, integrating a wider ver variety of um, data uh, and specifically for the um, CACS exercises, it's very important to integrate somehow um, the data which are coming directly from the simulation um, uh, um, uh, softwares. Um, we would be glad to do it. Uh, the so far we didn't have the opportunity to work on that very much, uh, partially because nobody gave us data. <laughs> there is one problem uh, more connected to that. Majority of those data are not uh, human driven. Uh, and for us, focus is the human performance. So to be able to um, integrate um, data in, uh, into um, such data into the system which we are dealing with, first we have to be integrated into the preparation of the exercise and the goals of, this, of the um, uh, uh, simulation uh, part of the exercise much more than we are currently. Um, the, if, we, if we will have possibility to do that in the future, that would be really great. Uh, we did have recently an experience in the Bolt Quest exercise where we, um, we had the uh, sensor data, which are coming, coming from the um, medical uh, applications, and we successfully did integrate it within the um, uh, other data which are related to pre-training. Uh, and e-learning, uh, which was uh, um, a situation which we welcomed, uh, but uh, we don't have very often a situation like that uh, um, because most of the exercises we are dealing with, um, they uh, the we are uh, we are having difficulties to be uh, integrated into the uh, into the exercise as a full member of the exercise. And that is going to change hopefully very soon because we are working also on the um, uh, on the standards for the uh, NATO um, uh, members uh, for uh, full uh, ADL integration. So I hope that I answer your question. Uh, we are we are welcome to work on those data. Please give us those data. We will integrate it. Thank you for the answer. Um, I can see here in the chat that uh, people are thinking about um, Miriam Celia. Um, I am uh, interested in joining uh, the working group uh, and uh, Arun. Um, more uh, thinking more about classroom homeworks assignments and other grades uh, depending how these uh, data are coming from um, at the first first place uh, and where they are coming from if they are coming from uh, lms i i assume uh, then it's easy to integrate it uh, we we don't have that opportunity very often in, within um, um, an exercise, uh, but um, if they are coming in some other ways, then it would be a little bit diff more difficult. Um, 
then uh, there is a question from Bobby that uh, in um, integrate self-assessment reflection to compare the learner's feedback to uh, to the observer's feedback or assessment feedback. results. That's an excellent uh, uh, comment, and we did have uh, those kinds of um, uh, situation uh, in uh, some of the exercises. Uh, again. Um, when we have both data, uh, it, it is easy to integrate it, um, but uh, we don't have opportunity to do that very often. Uh, one um, uh, other uh, issue connected with that is that very often this kind of data or this type of data are um, uh, gathered as uh, part of the general survey. So that means basically that we lose a chance to see a uh, connection in between um, performance or um, uh, observer feedback on a specific unit or person uh, in uh, connection with their own opinion about the mission or about the effort or about the objective or anything else. So very often we have that kind of the trouble. And uh, if uh, we um, um, uh, um, somehow um, resolve that issue, uh, then I agree that would be extremely uh, useful for uh, everyone to see um, um, where they are and where they should be and how, what they think about that and where is the gap. Um, the, is it possible to limit the uh, the time interval shown on the dashboard? Maybe this is in some filter settings. Yes, yes, there are a lot of fit, filter settings over there, so you can limit it. You can when you go to the edit, you can limit the the the, the filter settings, and you can you can change all of that according to your uh, your preferences. Oh, what is the graphic? Oh, that's a good one. Thank you so much. What is the graphic library rules of plotting? Uh, yes, uh, that's e charts. Um, we started with um, it's also open source. Everything is open source. Uh, we started with the um, uh, the other one, um, uh, DJ3, but uh, then we switched because we thought that this one is uh, prettier um, uh, and. Uh, uh, it's also something but it could be changed uh, if um, uh, it comes to um, um, feedback or, or um, uh, people preferences but so far we didn't hear any anything about that that's right yes so someone posted actually the the link here thank you Arun thank you There are many, many um, different uh, data visualizations, and we choose um, only those which we thought they're appropriate and mostly commonly used. Juliana, would you do you have anything else you'd like to say to wrap things up? Um, well, I, I would really encourage people to talk to tell us what they. <laughs> What they would like to see and how where we are going. Um, I am really happy that I am part of this process and that I can see how learning analytics and how analytics at all can help people to uh, see their gaps in the uh, learning and training, how they can connect uh, learning with training. Um, and uh, um, I'm really excited where we are going next. We had several um, opportunities to um, uh, um, lead uh, this analytics process in an, um, uh, international exercises, and we put together some of the um, researches after the afterwards. So I would encourage you also to go on the website madless.org and to pull down. Um, the research which is, which is available over there and which is connected to this. 
Um, and I'm really looking forward to um, uh, go forward and uh, with uh, this project and uh, with the implementation. And I hope that uh, a whole lot of people will be using it in their own um, exercises or maybe outside of the exercises for visualizing some uh, trainings uh, uh, or learning. Uh, Liana, this is Gigi from Gigi Roman from NATO School Ober America. Good to see you. Good to see you. Uh, and thank you. This was wonderful, and I'm happy to see the the interface, the demo uh, today. Um, so to have access actually to this, uh, I was actually interested. I see people ready to you know and interested to join the working group. But I mean, we even I'm not part of the working group, but I feel I'm I'm part of this. And uh, you helped us with the with with the workshop conducted a few years ago at NATO school. So two questions now. Uh, people are still asking because XAPI from for most of us is still at the beginning. So there's many uh, of our course participants from NATO and partners still asking uh, for more training. So just th that session was a, a really hit, even though we had, uh, you know, we had about 15, 20 people, uh, but more people are asking because now is after three years. So that will be one if you're planning to conduct uh, any more training, uh, considering the con conditions that we cannot travel, maybe some hands on. Uh, in regards to this, so that will be one question. And then the second one, as we are looking, we're gathering a lot of data now through uh, tests or surveys. In in uh, I will talk about Elias LMS or Moodle LMS. Um, is and, and people are looking now now that we gather and collect this data in Elias. Is there any way to analyze this data, something similar? Because you, you get from these people that are using external tools, they export into SPSS or into other software to analyze and, and look at the data. Uh, is there anything that we can address where you can help with this? and Maybe demonstrate at some point how you can analyze data collected from tests or surveys over the year or over the years. From, uh, from the participants. Thank you. Thank you, Gigi. Uh, I'm glad that that, that training was um, useful. Um, I, I'm, for more training, I think that you should talk to my boss. <laughs> um, and uh, it, uh, I, I'm sure that uh, in uh, in ADL and um, uh, Dr. Say shots and uh, uh, they uh, they will have a plan for further uh, development and for further trainings, but um, I can address uh, this issue about the LMSs and different kinds of da data. Uh, again, this um, I I want to tell you that this prototype and many other visualizations and ways how to utilize that data at glance. Uh, in uh, uh, and analyze it are perks of using XAPI. Uh, if you don't use XAPI, and in your in uh, in, in a case of uh, um, LMSs like uh, Moodle, um, Moodle actually um, has plugins uh, for use of XAPI. For Elias, I'm not sure how that works, but uh, regardless, if you have the um, XAPI um, data which are not XAPI, they all can be transfer and, trans and transform into the XAPI um, standard, and it could actually be useful in that way. Um, the um, that would be very straightforward way because uh, then in that case you can follow the path of all other XAPI data um, with uh, um, uh, easily. Um, if uh, you have surveys, I'm not sure in which uh, format that counts. Uh, usually in my experience uh, with the surveys which we have around the um, uh, um, CACS exercises, they're very hard to transfer into the XAPI data simply because uh, usually uh, we don't know who uh, is uh, the uh, 
um, how we can, uh, who, who is the, the person who is performing the, um, the, the action. And that is really hard. But um, every case is different. And I don't have a specific recommendation for something like that. I'm sorry. So the, the data, if we can extract, because you said you can import the data, the, from the survey and test, we can get a CSV or Excel type. Will this be yeah. a good, good uh, format? That would be definitely good format if uh, if we are uh, if we know who is the um, uh, um, if we can match the intent identifiers in between the systems. Uh, if you uh, if you give us uh, the the leads, uh, uh, how we can join those data, we can definitely work with them. Okay, sounds good. Thank you so much. Thank you, and again, good to see you. Thank you. Good to see you. Actually, I don't see you. You just, just see me. This is embarrassing. I don't see any of you. <laughs> Do you have recommendation for the content design? So, oh, I can see you now. <laughs> so that content would support reporting. Which XAPI verbs to use, what to report, etc. Thank you for this question. This, uh, um, uh, um, we, uh, we, when, we, when I say we, the IDL initiatives and in working recently on some uh, profiles uh, and uh, I would see more and more comes uh, in the future and I, we hope that we de develop uh, uh, a profile, spe specific profile for the use in, uh, in military exercises. But uh, until then, we actually use profiles if they are there. Uh, like CMI5 uh, or video profile or uh, uh, which consists in a specific uh, 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 of specific verbs. But other than that, we, uh, we actually use whatever we can get. The, the recommendation uh, for the content design, uh, it's a tricky uh, if you don't have profiles. It has to be uh, led by SME and basically depends on what they tell you, uh, what are the important parts uh, in the content and where you should pay attention and where the XAPI data should be um, uh, uh, coming and uh, how they would be valuable for the insight and the learning. I must say that most in most cases, we don't have that luxury that SME would sit with us very long time and discuss about these issues. So um, we, um, in, in some cases, we actually got luck, uh, lucky and we, uh, because um, we uh, cleverly choose different types of the uh, content delivery. Uh, so the, that we can different, we can follow the uh, user and participants or learner behavior based on that. For example, if we have some uh, content which is uh, which supposed to be delivered at glance or which people are supposed to uh, know by heart or they need it in within the exercise environment, then we deliver it in a mobile app or in, uh, um, in, uh, um, in some ebook or something what they can actually read on their uh, on the palm of their hand. Um, and so that was our trick, basically Div diversity, uh, div uh, diversity of the content delivery uh, was one way how we can deal with that. But we do hope that in the future people will be actually using profiles and then uh, we will not have those problems, um, then the content and uh, design will go into that and uh, it will be easy to follow. Like there, we got um, one more question. Is there a limit to the time interval as in only up to the last three years? Last year, last three months, etc. There is scope to configure the dashboard. Well, uh, I'm I'm sorry to hear that there is a, a limit. I I was not paying attention to that part particular. But can you tell us 
what would be the interval which you would be interested in most? In most uh, uh, cases uh, on the dashboards, there are like last seven days, last month or last year or something like that. And uh, uh, for the purpose of this particular dashboard prototype, we actually eliminated those last month or last uh, 30 days because um, that would mean that some of the, the, the uh, visualizations would not be visible for the last 30 days. But um, if that is the part of the question which I am addressing. Uh, but if, it, if uh, there is a more figuration of the time limits, uh, I, I believe that we can add those. Sliders uh, to set the time of reporting would be great. Yeah, sure, we can add, we can well, think about adding something like that. That would be nice. All right. Well, it looks like we're almost at about time. So I wanted to say thank you to Bliana for the wonderful presentation and for sharing access to the tools. And thanks to our webinar attendees for joining and participating and asking great, great questions. And please use the links in the chat to madlocks.org to follow up if you think of any more feedback or questions as you're playing with the dashboard. Um, one last reminder, this webinar will be posted to adonet.gov by the end of the week in case you'd like to review it or share it with your colleagues. And you'll be able to find it in the webinar section of adonet.gov. And there's a link to that in case you need that one more time. And thank I think everyone. that is it for us. So thank you, Biliana. Thank you. Bye.